What you see here is a schedule for a dynasty in NCAA football 2003 with the Kansas Jayhawks of 2002, a team that actually went 2-10, and, and I did modify the schedule a lot, added some uh, kind of tougher teams and a couple of you know, away games that uh, you know, took out the 1-AA Midwest and the fairly e some of the easier games took out, still some easier games in there, but also added some bigger opponents. We're playing Maryland, we're playing Notre Dame. We're going to Ames, Iowa today, though, to start the season off against the number five ranked Iowa State Cyclones. That's right, number five because of a, a week one upset of the Florida State Seminoles. That actually didn't happen in 2002, but I can say that uh, 2002 was Iowa State's highest ranking ever as a, a program. I believe they got up to number eight at one point in the season and promptly uh, kind of fell off of that. Their uh, main focus here is the running game. They have a very good mobile quarterback, uh, maybe not the most accurate or best decision maker, but he is a very good at uh, running very a lot of good speed, good at breaking tackles as well. Uh, here, though, he's just getting wrapped up by guys, and uh, they end up losing possession. Kansas takes over, and they just go to the running game because their uh, quarterback, yeah, quarterback isn't that great. Number 13, I believe he was also the quarterback in 2001 when they also went 2-10. and 10. He, in the actual 2002 uh, that really happened, he was benched, I think, by the middle of the season. However, in this game, he stands tall as the Jayhawks starter. We actually got around to the outside, got the first down here, but it was called back on a penalty, unfortunately. So we're uh, just going to have to try to make something happen through the air, and oftentimes that just doesn't work. Overthrown pass there, not, you know, not the best passing weather here, a rainy day in Ames, Iowa. But that's a great catch made there by number 8 for the Cyclones. And so they are kind of moving the ball down the field here. That was a bad pass. Knocked down, you know what I said about the um, poor decision making. Also, a number of dropped passes would come back to haunt Iowa State this whole game. I guess, I don't know if the rain actually is a factor there. But uh, if it is, then I can totally see how. Because there are a lot of overthrown balls and a number of dropped passes. Big defensive play there, not quite a sack, but an incompletion did the job just as well as it could. This play here, scrambling and finding uh, number one over on the sideline, making the uh, making the catch with the toe drag. Actually, NCAA Football 2003 was the first edition of this vaunted series to contain a toe drag. And remember, in college football, you only got to get one foot down. So that was a completed pass. That's a first down. Big broken tackle on the draw play here and about a gain of 20. Then here uh, we go with the power option, and we've just been trying to move the ball on the ground, as I've been saying. Passing game isn't exactly the most stellar. There we don't get the first down, and so we go to a third down, trying to go to a, a play-action play. That's knocked down. That was a good defensive play by the corner there, good awareness. And so, theoretically, we'd go for a field goal, but I know we wouldn't be able to make it in the rain like this. So how about a fake, and how about a first down? That would be the first faked special teams play of the game as we end the first quarter out, 0-0. Zero to zero. Going back to the power option here, or no, I'm sorry, this is just a toss play. Number 11 gets around the outside, gets through a couple of defenders, and uh, we're basically in scoring position here as we just keep pounding the ball on the ground. Number 11 had a big game. He gets a touchdown here to give the Jayhawks the lead. I don't think that receiver he uh, chest bumped with was actually that far back in the end zone, so he may have just teleported there or been standing there waiting for him to get into the end zone to do just that. You don't know. Iowa State would come back, and we're moving the ball with the passing game. One of the things, their quarterback is a very, very good, strong arm, so he can deliver the ball with pretty good accuracy down the field, as seen here. And a lot of times, that was a third and 15, I believe, and we couldn't get the stop there. That happened far too much in this game. Uh, to you would think to be really successful. There's a success in the passing game. Again, another drop pass. I believe that's their second of the game. But most of their success came off the ground. However, there was a touchdown, so I'll eat my own words right there. Size happy, and they have tied the game up 7-7. Seven to seven. Kansas trying to make stuff happen in the passing game. That was a good pass uh, on a streaking tight end there. Uh, this would be a bad pass play. We just kind of scramble around and try to make anything happen. Ended up throwing it into, I think that was at least quadruple, if not quintuple, coverage. Not a great idea. 
That was an overthrown ball. Iowa State has the ball back, of course. A lot of that, too. And then a sack and a fumble recovery, recovery Sorry, within the 10-yard line. So the Hawks have a great chance with 50 seconds left. A key mistake for Iowa State because Kansas is also going to get the ball back at the beginning of the third quarter. So if the Hawks can score, then they will have a, a decisive lead. And they do that just here on fourth and goal with three seconds left. Going for the touchdown because, uh, you know, if you go for the field goal there, there's a little bit more of a margin of error. Uh, and, you know, you just like to have that seven-point cushion. And if you don't get it, we still do get the ball back at the beginning of the third. So not all that important that we get it back. But still, we want to get a touchdown. You want to score coming back. Second and ten, we go to the ground. Get a pretty decent game. Third and ten, we're going to go to the fullback. And he can't quite get it. Fullback really wasn't breaking that many tackles today. Fourth and one, you know what's coming. You know what I'm going to say. Fake punt. First down. That is the second <laughs> faked special teams play in this game. And let me tell you, there's more to come. Uh, we do not get the first down on the next drive, though. And then a high snap basically destroys all the goodwill we had built up with that fake punt. So really, it was all for naught. Nice completed catch there. They were getting the passing game going until this play uh, where the passing game very, very decisively failed. And uh, that right there is going to be taken back to the house by number 12 for the Jayhawks touchdown. And it is 21-7 to in the third quarter. And I think Cyclone fans might be starting to get a little antsy at home watching their fifth rated Cyclones. That's right, fifth rated. I still can't get over that. That's something that NCAA football 2003 in particular would do if you got an upset over a good team early in the season, then you were pretty much guaranteed to move up really highly in the rankings. Probably a little bit higher than you should have. Uh, I think that happened to Virginia Tech last year actually when they defeated o uh, Ohio State. They were ranked for a little bit then promptly fell to I think six and six. So, you know, you overreact to early season victories sometimes. That was an overthrown ball. I haven't been ca uh, counting overthrown balls too much today. Here on third and nine. Again, you want to get the stop, but you just don't. That was poorly played by me, uh, controlling the cornerback. So Iowa State still has life at the end of the third, but they only have five minutes left to make up a two-touchdown deficit, and they got to do it. So don't celebrate too fast. Number 69, uh, I think it's a defensive lineman there. Don't know who it is. It kind of holds on that shot for way too long. Another overthrown ball. I mean, wow, that, that should have been what I've been keeping track of. Another sack. I believe that's the second or third of the game for the Kansas defense. And it's fourth and 15. They got to make something happen. But as I was talking about, very dangerous, and they can. They have a very good uh, team of wide receivers. Perfectly thrown ball. I think that was the only spot where that play could have worked uh, after a certain point. Great through the tight end to uh, get in front of the linebacker there. And just like that, it's first and ten from the 15, where it was certain doom only a few minutes before. So, or only, really only a few seconds before, only two plays before. And now they are in very uh, deadly scoring position, and they do just that right there with number 82, the guy who uh, had kind of saved that drive for him. So they're only down by seven. They do kick uh, away. They don't go for the onside kick. I assume they have enough faith in the defense. Uh, to assume they'll get a stop. Very good return here, up to the 40-yard line or so by number 89. I believe that's the freshman who uh, turned out to be Brandon Rito. Fourth and three. I just skipped the first three plays because they really didn't go anywhere. We do another fake punt, and guess what? It works again. That is the third fake special teams play of the game. You know what? Sometimes you just get lucky. Sometimes the other team really isn't paying attention. So theoretically here, all the Hawks have to do is keep moving the ball down the field. But that proves more difficult than it would seem. Two timeouts immediately, so Iowa State only has one timeout left. However, just to kind of mess with them, I audibled here. You notice the safeties don't move back, even after I audible to a pass play. So we got one-on-one -on -one coverage downfield, and number 19 makes that catch. And that has got to be disheartening. One timeout left, feasibly, if the Jayhawks can hold on to the ball, this game is over, ah, but they don't do that. It's a fumble right there. Recovered by Iowa State. So you know what? They've got a chance. They've got 95 yards to go. One timeout. 
But they've got an explosive offense. All the uh, Kansas really just needs to stop the uh, pass game. Four people there to take that one down. 52 seconds, fourth and ten. This is really Iowa State's last chance. And it just doesn't go anywhere because of another dropped pass. Unfortunate way for that to end for them. But hey, you know what? You got to make those catches. And number 82 goes from the hero to the goat. Kansas kneels at the goal line. And that is the end of the game. Big upset. Well, maybe big upset. We're, we might look back and just think, like, well, they were fifth ranked. I mean, come on. But a uh, very good way to begin the season out with a win over a rival in a rainy day at their home stadium. Just a great way to start a season off, of course, in the actual 2002. They didn't start the season off this way, the Kansas Jayhawks. So we will see you back next week at home in Lawrence to take on the Maryland Terrapins. That's right. 21-14 victory. Good way to end the game. Good Or a good way to begin the season. We'll see you back next week at home.